Hey everybody, Mr. Klingon here. Um, today we're going to be starting chapter three of Number of the Stars. Now, if you haven't already read chapters one and two, or listened to them, I should say, you should definitely go back and do that first. Okay. So remember, chapter one was Why Are You Running? So Anne Marie and her friend Ellen were racing down uh, the sidewalk in their home city of Copenhagen. Um, Anne Marie's little sister Kirsty was there too. And they get stopped by some German Nazi soldiers who are pretty suspicious of them. Then in chapter two, that was a super important chapter. They gave us a lot of background knowledge. It was called, Who is the Man Who Rides Past? So we learned about the King of Denmark, King Christian X. Um, we also learned some really important things about Anne Marie's family. Like she had a, uh, a sister, an older sister named Lise, who died somehow, um, some sort of accident. And Lise was married to, um, or she was going to be married to a, a man named Peter. Um, and we also heard about, they have a, uh, an uncle named um, Henrik, Uncle Henrik, who lives on the coast close to, um, close to Sweden, another country. Okay. So definitely make sure you go back and listen to these chapters if you haven't already. Because today we're starting chapter three, Where is Mrs. Hirsch? Here we go. The days of September passed one after the other, much the same. Anne Marie and Ellen walked to school together and home again, always now taking the longer way, avoiding the tall soldier and his partner. Kirsty dawdled just behind them or scampered ahead, never out of their sight. The two mothers still had their coffee together in the afternoons. They began to knit mittens as the days grew slightly shorter and the first leaves began to fall from the trees, because another winter was coming. Everyone remembered the last one. There was no fuel now for the homes and apartments in Copenhagen, and the winter nights were terribly cold. Like the other families in their building, the Johansons had opened the old chimney and installed a little stove to use for heat when they could find coal to burn. Mama used it too sometimes for cooking, because electricity was rationed now. At night, they used candles for light. Sometimes Ellen's father, a teacher, complained in frustration because he couldn't see in the dim light to correct his students' papers. Soon we will have to add another blanket to your bed, Mama said one morning as she and Anne Marie tidied the bedroom. Kirsty and I are lucky to have each other for warmth in the winter. Anne Marie said, poor Ellen, to have no sisters. She will have to snuggle in with her mama and papa when it gets cold, Mama said, smiling. I remember when Kirsty slept between you and Papa. She was supposed to stay in her crib, but in the middle of the night, she would climb out and get in with you, Anne Marie said, smoothing the pillows on the bed. Then she hesitated and glanced at her mother, fearful that she had said the wrong thing the thing that would bring the pained look to her mother's face. The days when little Kirsty slept in Mama and Papa's room were the days when Lise and Anne-Marie shared this bed. But, Anne, but Mama was laughing quietly. I remember too, she said. Sometimes she wet the bed in the middle of the night. I did not, Kirsty said haughtily from the bedroom doorway. I never ever did that. Mama, still laughing, knelt and kissed Kirsty on the cheek. Time to leave for school, girls, she said. She began to button Kirsty's jacket. Oh, dear, she said suddenly. Look, the button has broken. Right in half. Anne-Marie, take Kirsty with you after school to the little shop where Mrs. Hirsch sells thread and buttons. See if you can buy just one to match the others on her jacket. I'll give you some kroner. It shouldn't cost very much. But after school, when the girls stopped at the shop, which had been there as long as Anne Marie could remember, they found it closed. There was a new padlock on the door and a sign, but the sign was in German. They couldn't read the words. I wonder if Mrs. Hurst is sick, Anne Marie said as they walked away. I saw her Saturday, Ellen said. She was with her husband and their son. They all looked just fine. Or at least the parents look just fine. The son always looks like a horror. She giggled. Anne-Marie made a face. 
The Hirsch family lived in the neighborhood, so they had seen the boy, Samuel, often. He was a tall teenager with thick glasses, stooped shoulders, and unruly hair. He rode a bicycle to school, leaning forward and squinting, wrinkling his nose to nudge his glasses into place. His bicycle had wooden wheels now that rubber tires weren't available, and it creaked and clattered on the street. I think the Hirsches all went on a vacation to the seashore, Kirsty announced. And I suppose they took a big basket of pink frosted cupcakes with them, Anne-Marie said sarcastically to her sister. Yes, I suppose they did, Kirsty replied. Anne-Marie and Ellen exchanged looks that meant, Kirsty is so dumb. No one in Copenhagen had taken a vacation at the seashore since the war began. There were no pink frosted cupcakes. There hadn't been for months. Still, Anne-Marie thought, looking back at the shop before they turned the corner, where was Mrs. Hirsch? The Hirsch family had gone somewhere. Why else would they close the shop? Mama was troubled when she heard the news. Are you sure? She asked several times. We can find another button someplace, Anne-Marie reassured her. Or we can take one from the bottom of the jacket and move it up. It won't show very much. But it didn't seem to be the jacket that worried Mama. Are you sure the sign was in German? She asked. Maybe you didn't look carefully. Mama, it had a swastika on it. Her mother turned away with a distracted look. Anne-Marie, watch your sister for a few moments and begin to peel the potatoes for dinner. I'll be right back. Where are you going? Anne-Marie asked her as her mother start, started for the door. I want to talk to Mrs. Rosen. Puzzled, Anne-Marie watched her mother leave the apartment. She went to the kitchen and opened the door to the cupboard where the potatoes were kept. Every night now, it seemed, they had potatoes for dinner and very little else. All right, and there's a page break there, so that's what we're gonna pause for today, okay? So we'll finish up um, chapter three tomorrow.